Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the inheritance tag, which is another way we can kind of morph or blend between two different objects in Cinema 4D. Um, it does have a little bit of a different setup. It doesn't go from like one polygon object to another, uh, but there are some workarounds as we'll see. You know, we've talked about morphing previously using the pose morph tag. I also think I've talked about it briefly when it comes to the cloner. Um, so we have a number of different ways of doing this, and this is just one other technique. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have some text. I have a platonic, nothing too crazy here, just a text object I made editable and connected and deleted everything, and a platonic that I beveled the edges before um, using current state to object. So now what I'm gonna do is create two cloners, one for the text, the other for the platonic. Right, actually switch the order there so it can be consistent. And I'm gonna create a sphere that I'm gonna scale down very small. And because it's gonna be so small, uh, I can actually get away with reducing the number of segments, which will make Cinema 4D happier because we are gonna be creating a lot of clones. And depending on the type of computer you have, you may need to use fewer clones or else you may risk crashing Cinema 4D. So I put the sphere uh, inside the cloner I, for the text. I made it a child of it. And we are gonna switch the mode here to object mode so we can um, distribute these clones onto another object. That will be the text in this particular cloner. And from here, what I want to do is increase the count, all right, to something a little bit ridiculous like 5,000. I'm looking to kind of fill up the text here. And I really should hide the text so we can see exactly what we have and how many holes we have. Now I could use the push apart effector here to kind of push these further apart. Um, this is going to be way too much. Uh, I would want to look at the radius here and see that it's eight. So maybe just something like four would be helpful um, just to space them out a little bit. That gets rid of some of the, the holes there, um, gets, gets rid of some of the overlapping as well. All right, so we could do that, but we're not. We'll just work with this. And I'm going to copy the sphere that's in my cloner for the text and place it in the platonic cloner or the cloner for the platonic. And I'm going to do the same thing to this, switch the mode to object, drop in the platonic into the object section here, and then use the same number of spheres in this cloner that I did in my previous cloner, because these are essentially going to just move from, you know, this object to this object and having uh, each sphere have kind of a place to go uh, will make things easier and look better. So at this point, we're ready to add the inheritance effector. Now you wanna be a bit careful which object you add the inheritance effector to. Um, we won't see it until we add the field. So, uh, you know, it may not be an issue, but you definitely might want to experiment with which object gets the inheritance effector applied to it um, if things aren't looking right, okay? and so actually, I'm going to start by having the text selected since I think that will not look right. And I can show you that. So in the inheritance or in my effectors, I'll choose inheritance. I did have my cloner selected, so it automatically got applied. If you don't see it listed there, go ahead and just drag and drop it in. Do make sure, though, it is not applied to the cloner for, for the platonic. And in our inheritance effector now, we need to um, decide what properties we're going to have one cloner inherit from the other, whether that's the position, the rotation, or the scale. We just want really position here. And in the effector section, what object we're going to inherit from. And since we applied this to the text, we are going to have it inherit the position from the platonic. Now we also need to check morph motion object, and it may look like it's disappeared, but if we use our strength property now, we can see that is not quite the case. It's now blending between the text and the platonic. Uh, we are still seeing the platonic cloner though. and We really don't want that or to see the platonic it itself really. And so now when we use this strength property, we can see them blend together. Now this is kind of what I was talking about where like we get this not very natural organic looking blend because it's almost tracing out the edges first or having those move before the surface. 
Um, and that really should be more noticeable when we use like a linear field here. There we go. And this is kind of what I was talking about, where you can definitely see that it's populating the edges of the platonic before kind of filling in there. And so maybe that's an interesting uh, look you want. Uh, but if it isn't, then just kind of switching the order uh, here is what we'll want to do, where the inheritance is applied to the platonic, not the text. So I'll just start from scratch here because the inheritance effector can be a little bit strange. I'll select the uh, platonic for the cloner, make sure it's visible. And this will be the one I apply the inheritance effector to. Okay, just double check to make sure it got applied and it did. I will then. In the effector tab here, make sure that my text gets applied or added as the object, and we check morph motion object. We now want to hide the text cloner, the cloner for the text, so that we can now do this. And you may be going, okay, well, that looks the same, and it does. But now, once we have a field and a linear field, you're going to see that it looks very different because it's now based on the position of these on the platonic and not the text. So we still get a little bit of it towards the end, uh, which we maybe could get rid of by rotating these or perhaps even using a more advanced um, field setup by adding in say a random field, maybe even a spherical field would help with this as well. I bet that actually would look pretty good. But you can see now just a matter of animating this and we have a nice morph between a platonic or whatever object we want and text or whatever object we want. And that's really, all there is to it. Um, have your two pieces of geometry, create a bunch of clones on each using two different cloners, apply the inheritance effector, and then using a field or the strength, you can blend between them. But let's take this one step further. I do want to try the spherical field, as I do think that will break things up even more. Okay, so let's make sure the spherical field is placed appropriately. And now as I scale this up, yeah, we get a much more kind of organic morphing here. So that is really neat. Okay. And what we're going to do is take this cloner and turn this into a volume object. And this is also a risky move. So make sure you're saving frequently, uh, being very careful, and your computer is up to the task. So I will start with a volume builder. I'm going to place the platonic inside of that. It does not need to be inside the inheritance effector, though. And honestly, at this point, we just get a big old blob. Uh, we can see what that actually looks like if we just scale out. Now, I don't expect us to get too much detail here um, or really to be able to read the text. So that's going to be kind of the deciding factor here. Um, you know, can we read the text? Now, I'm going to take my volume builder and put it inside a volume mesher. I was holding down alt there. Um, and you can see it's it's almost legible here. Um, and this gives us a really kind of almost liquidy look to this. Okay, so, you know, not that we really can do fluids in Cinema 4D without, you know, real flow or um, X particles, but that's actually not, not the, you know, the worst liquid I've ever seen before. And we could even, you know, make it better by lowering our voxel size here. So if I lower this to five, all right, see we get um, something that's, you know, a little bit more splotchy, but now we have more detail, right? So that's looking good. Really kind of interesting there. Um, and yeah, look at that. Now to finish this off, what I would do, because right now this is pretty slow, it's not animated, so I would definitely want to scale, or keyframe, I should say, the size of my spherical field. Okay, so just have it start at zero. Keyframe it at frame zero. Maybe go to, say, frame 40. And turn the size up so that we can see our text. Okay, almost there, almost. And good enough. I'll keyframe that. Uh, and even though we've keyframed the spherical field here, the volume builder is still calculating what our object should look like every frame. And so that's going to be really kind of slow, really limit us playback wise. What we can try and do to help with this is to cache this um, by creating a cache layer in our volume builder. So I can create that. 
And what I need to do is tell this that it's an animation and that it's uh, from frame zero to frame, I think I did 40, right? Yep. So that's what I will set here and then click cache. And depending on what you're trying to do, this can take a little bit of time uh, to cache. Uh, so depending on the voxel size, if you have any smooths, um, you know, number of clones you're trying to blend between in this type of situation, uh, this could take, you know, a lot of time. Uh, so be patient with it, you know, don't just exit out if things don't appear to be moving right away. Um, this one actually seemed to be going pretty good. And let's see what we get now kind of playback wise. So I don't think we're at 30 frames per second, um, but we're definitely much, much faster. And not only that, now Cinema 4D isn't having to calculate this every frame. It's just playing it back. Okay, turns out the size animation wasn't as kind of smooth as I would have liked because it really doesn't start till frame 18. Um, so it's perhaps a bit faster than I would have liked, but overall, this is a really kind of nice, interesting um, look uh, that, you know, like I said, kind of looks like um, liquid here. Now, the last thing I may want to consider doing here is not that I have a lot of polygons here, but uh, I may want to consider uh, dropping this into a remesh uh, to lower the polygon count if it is very, very high. Now. Um, the problem with this is it doesn't, and not that I've really looked at it too much, but, um, there isn't a way to cache this out. So it's going to have to do this calculation, um, every frame, which can be very problematic. Okay. So the edge flow looks much better. The number of polygons actually hasn't changed because I haven't lowered the mesh density. Um, but it's going to have to go through that entire calculation again. All right. Whenever I change a frame. So definitely be careful with using the remesh, remesh in this particular mode. I really hope at some point they add the kind of Z remesher portion of this into the volume mesher. That would actually be um, a nice touch here. But that is a look at how you can blend between two different objects using cloners and the inheritance effector. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If there's anything else you want to see, please let me know and take care.